Welcome in to the Tuesday, September 17th, 2024 edition of the Daily wow. Energy Newsbeat. Stand up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Italy's central bank backs helping poor countries fund energy transition a tale <laughs> as old as time we'll see how that works out for them next up lng pipeline fire threatens home in the houston area and a neighborhood was evacuated yeah 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 not good next up u.s natural gas power is booming thanks to ai chat gpt got to love it next up canada and mexico Boost competition for U.S. LNG exports to Asia. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will cover hmm. what happened in the overall oil and gas markets, and we'll talk a little bit about the Fed rate decision that is coming up tomorrow or Wednesday, September 18th, as you listen to this. We will talk about all of that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there in Italy. Italy's central bank helps poorer countries fund energy transition. Book, bull, uh, bull hockey. I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to do that one. I love that in Animal House, and it is absolutely applicable here. Financing transition projects in emerging market and developing economies, ease, Michael, just for those uneducated guys like me, can be twice as expensive in advanced economies, Panetta told a G7 international agency IEA conference in Rome. The resources would be more than offset the economic damage avoided from the climate change they would suffer. This is bullcrap. They are missing the boat. Why don't we export the West's great technology of clean coal burning, natural gas, and reduce emissions and teach that, and then make money with the poorer countries instead of making money on the poorer countries. I, I look at it this way. This is a basically, here's the thing. You're not going to get economic energy output from building this stuff. No. Nope. Okay. So hopefully, because this money is just going to be get distributed to companies to build the infrastructure, hopefully those companies are based in these poor countries. But They're knowing not. what will most likely happen is large multinational companies will come in. They'll bring in multinational workers and none of that money will actually flow into the country other than they will be stuck with this horrible higher cost energy when they should have probably just built natural gas. Even if natural gas multi conglomerates come in and build the natural gas infrastructure, at least you end up with cheaper power. Whereas this you're going to end up with higher power, and no jobs. That's the, I mean, I'm not against just injecting money into a poorer economy. Might as well, I mean, we, 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 there could be worse things. I'm down to give, you know, but I would, this I would is not give, a great way to do it. No, this is, and, and this is a typical deal that is going on with the West to the poorer countries. It is ludicrous and the wrong way to do it. So, hey, let's go to this next story here. LNG pipeline threatens homes in a Houston area neighborhood evacuated. Holy smokes, Batman, Michael, the fire began at 855 in LaPorte, located about 25 miles south of Houston. And at the time we recorded this, there was about 4,000 people. I looked down the uh, power map there and you can see on the power map that it's in that little lower left-hand corner of the Texas border area. And some people I noticed were saying that this was started by illegals. And I'm like, you're going to blame illegals for everything now. So I'm like, you got to be kidding me. An email that officials have ordered the residents out. Please avoid the area. Anyway, you never know how it started, but I just, our prayers go out to everybody there. Yeah, no, it's it's not good. Energy Transfer, as we all recall, it is the company that's suing Greenpeace for their role in the Dakota Access Pipeline. Obviously, there's nothing to do with that. I just like to point that out. Not good, right. though. We hope everybody's safe. It's, you know, pipelines we always talk about that... pipelines are the safest ways to transport materials. They are, with the caveat of when things go wrong, it go really wrong. And so that's... And, and like I'm going to... I'm gonna Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Pipelines are notoriously safe until terrorism gets in. So anyway, let's go to the next story here. 
U.S. natural gas power is booming thanks to AI. Notice the pun on the storyline here, Michael? Yep. Booming. Yeah, yeah. The AI boom is driving a significant increase in demand for electricity in the United States. Michael, did you have that on your bingo card this morning? No, 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 I did not. During the first half of 2024, electricity generating firms unveil plans for the new gas power capacity to equal all capacity announced in 2020, according to the data from the Sierra Club cited by Bloomberg. Don't you know that Sierra Club's heads exploding? Speaking of exploding, they are so unhappy that all these natural gas plants are going in. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, if, if, if you're EQT, if you're a natural gas provider, this will probably help you. I also... You know, we look at Waha today and, you know, the Matterhorn pipelines right. coming online, which means there's just even more gas to stuff in there. Again, a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily, you know, are you know, are these AI data centers exactly where natural gas is? Yeah, a lot of them maybe are in Appalachia around the East Coast, but I think it becomes, I, again, I, I the, the issue, in my opinion, is not the power. I think it's the water and the cooling that are going to become an issue with this. Now, some of the cooling can be done with electricity, but we talked about that a while ago. The amount of water that's being used for these AI data centers is actually incredible. I right. think that's the bigger story here. I think it's a hidden story right now. This year, natural gas is expected. Michael, are you ready for this? Around 42% of America's electricity. Wow. Holy smoke. That's a lot of natural gas, baby. That's a lot. All right, what's next? Okay, let's go to Canada and Mexico boost competition for LNG for U.S. exports to Asia. This is pretty cool. Canada could potentially supply 36.2 million tons of LNG per year by 2040 and Mexico another 36.7 million tons. That's a lot of LNG. That's a, a large part of LNG. I think they're getting on. I think they're getting in on that game relatively because we've seen now the LNG export facility ban get lifted, and they're they they they're, they're now there's a global competition. It's the great part about allowing us to participate in the global market is allows us to take a lot of the natural gas that's stored up here and ship it elsewhere. Now, from a security standpoint, I like all the natural gas here because we need cheap energy here. Yes, yes it do. hurts those people out in West Day, you know, those oil and gas producers who who are selling negative, you know, negative differentials to Waha, but it, it joke's on you. Yeah, right, right. I'll tell you, though, and, and I want to just talk to any Sierra Club. If you're a Sierra Club out there and your head's still not exploded by having more LNG exporting around the world, come talk to us. We want you on the podcast. We'll, we'll be nice to you and just ask some real questions. Do you want the lower pollution around the world? Then let the U.S. export LNG and put an end to coal plants where they have an import facility. I yeah. like no, absolutely. I completely agree with you. You know, if and, you know, specifically with Canada and Mexico trying to boost their output. I mean, this is this would be great for Mexico, to be honest with you. Mexico needs to find ways to increase revenue. And this would be a great, cool. great way to do that. Right now, their number one export is human trafficking into the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of disgusted at this point. Okay. It was funny, though. You're hilarious, Stu. You're hilarious. <laughs> Follow him on X, folks, I guess. That's, that's that's the perfect place to advertise your X account. What do you got, Elf? Off to you, sir. <laughs> Throw it to me after that. Anytime Hi, I guys, can get Michael Tanner that, to beat his head on a desk, I have made my day. But before we do that, we, we probably better pay the bills around here before we get shut down. We appreciate everybody checking us out on the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. All the news and analysis that you've just heard is brought to you by that website. Two and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit that description below for all the links, the timestamps, links to the articles. You can also hit us up the energy newsbeat.substack.com. And you can also check out invest in oil dot energy newsbeat.com for access to our working interest project. We are partnering up with our friends over at Pecos country operating and Ray Trevino. So check that out. That's invest in oil dot energy newsbeat.com. 
com. But I mean, pretty pretty slow day on the markets too. I mean, I mean, overall markets had a, had a decent day. S and P five hundred was basically flat. Tech stocks did not do well, down about a half a percentage point. A two year yields down about a half a percentage point. Ten year yields down about eight tenths of a percentage point. Dollar index tumbled about three quarters of, or three tenths of a percentage point. Bitcoin down about two percentage points, fifty seven thousand dollars. Crude oil jumps about two dot or two. 0.5 percentage points up above 70, 70, 37. Brent oil basically flat, only up about a tenth of a percentage point, up to 72.02. Natural gas up 3.3 percentage points, $3.82. And we saw that XOP contract up a little less than a percentage, up to 129 and 60. Two cents. I mean, I mean, the big thing. I think what we're seeing with prices is there is still some residual effects hanging out from Hurricane Francine. Currently, as of noon this morning, about a fifth of all crude oil production and about twenty eight percent of all natural gas production out of the Gulf of Mexico was still shut in. So, still have some interesting effects there. Uh, tomorrow, as you guys listen to this, the U.S. Fed will be meeting, and we will hear a decision on whether or not rate cuts are coming. The consensus is 50 basis points, which would obviously be a boost to the U.S. economy, which could increase demand a little bit. Now, on the, the blank side, if if they do increase or, or do cut rates by 50 basis points, that is a sign that they don't feel like the economy is doing that great relative to where it could be. And the only reason you cut rates is because you need to stimulate the economy a little more. If, if, if the economy was doing great and they interest rates were at this level, you'd like to think they would keep them there. Now, a little bit a little bit of there is to inflation. So I think there's a bunch of different you know factors that will weigh into what Jerome Powell and the Fed will do. If it's a 25 basis point cut, who knows what happened? You know, obviously, if you read our good friends over at Reuters, play on words there, but, you know, they're still kind of chowding, touting some of the stuff coming out of China doesn't look great. We did see their oil refinery output fell for a fifth month, mainly as a site of weak fuel demand. And, and you know, mainly a lot of, you know, that then turns into decent export margins falling, which, you know, is not great. You know, we also did see over in China that industrial outgrowth has slowed, which is convenient to a five month low in August, while retail sales and new home prices also weaken further. So a lot of mixed data coming out of China. I think a lot of people are, are weighing that, you know, to, to kind of wrap it up. I think the big thing right now that's that people are waiting for specifically in the overall energy economy is what the Fed will do. Obviously, lowering interest rates is going to open up lending a little bit, could get people back into some of these larger capital projects that depend a lot on lending and the banking institutions where if they need to far if they if you know rates get lower capital still needs to find a home and it's going to go farther out on that yield curve which could open up some of these more energy projects to me what do you think the fed's going to do on wednesday that's a tough call from the couple points if they admit like you alluded to at the beginning if they admit and they lower it that the economy is not good that's not good for kamala Obama, Kamala, it's not good for her. And it's not good for the announcement that, oh, by the way, our economy is not that good. So you sit back and kind of go, well, wait a minute, and we're going to drag it out even more. Part of the problem is the global markets are facing the same thing. So it's not just the U.S. economy. I think there are other economies that are going to be worse off than the U.S. I think they'll cut. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think it'll be interesting to to see what they're you know we're gonna get a lot of Fed speak out of there, but I think it'll be interesting to see what they're underlying the obviously the decision that they make, but then the speech that Jerome Powell gives for kind of rationalizing what they do. I think that will be telling, and whether or not he says more rates are coming, whether this is a one off thing. I think it'll be it'll be very interesting. But that's really all I got to. Everything else, you know, on the oil and gas EMP side, somewhat chill, but I do think that it's. I, I do think that it's a an interesting an interesting market out there, but you know I think we're gonna kind of just wrap it up here unless you don't got anything else for people. I don't just keep your head on a swivel. Keep we we will do that. So all right, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Thanks for checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast, the Energy Newbie Podcast for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.